Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And I'm here with a viewer request or a subscriber request. Okay, a couple of weeks ago I did a video showing how to ground Tim Holtz paper dolls. Um, in the description box there, there's a little gravy. Click on that or click the read more. And I'll put the link to that video in there. But lots of people have asked me, how did I create the background tags that I was using? Because I didn't do them in the video. I just did the application of the paper doll. So... Um, lots of you have asked to see that, and although I can't replicate those tabs uh, tags absolutely identically, I can certainly show you how they were made in the first place. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a few because I need to build up a stash of them for myself anyway. So first things first, um, I'm gonna pull in my trusty guillotine. Anyone who asks me, because I've had a few requests, this is a cross-cut guillotine. I got it on eBay several years ago in an auction, so I have no idea other than it's a cross-cut. Now, I'm going to make my tags. Um, these are the dimensions I'm using. This is just a personal preference for what I'm using these for. So they're seven inches tall or 18 centimeters by three and a half inches wide by nine centimeters or, or nine centimeters. So that's just literally the size I'm using for this project, nothing more, nothing less. So let's put that to one side as well. And I'm using a bit of scrap um, or using scraps and offcuts of um, manila file folders. So I'm just going to trim these down a little bit and make this last one. So I said it was seven inches tall by three and a half inches wide. Right, that's enough of the chopping noises. Put that down on the floor. These little bits will probably go in the scraps, but I don't really know. Um, so that gives me my basic shape. Now, when it comes to cutting the corners, um, I very often will use, I've got like an old store card and I've cut the angles on it. And I, I tend to do this with it and put them on the side. Or you can just get an existing um, tag and use the existing tag as your template. I just... I tend to do this just so that I know the uniform and they're spaced um, because of my OCD. Um, having things matching is really important to me. So let's put those by. Now this is a bit of a production line style make. Um, I don't know how interesting it's going to be. I will try and talk my way through it as I'm doing it and show you options. I'm not sure how long things are going to take to dry, so if they're taking a little bit longer than normal, I will actually stop the video and let them fully dry and then come back to you. Um, I've just got a mat here that I'm working with, um, and I've got here, this is just a ceramic tile. I was going to use my glass cutting mat or my glass mat however the reflections from the glass mat are really distracting when you're doing a video so this is just a large ceramic tile it could be a sheet of glass it could be a bit of acrylic it could even be a ceramic plate so don't don't get held up on that it has to be a bit of equipment it just has to be a something I've also got a spritz bottle of water it's just one of those travel bottles I think this is a travel bottle anyway it's just got regular tap water in it um, and I think we just need to get going and see how far we go okay I will tell you as I'm going along what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and hopefully it'll all make sense in the end so I'm using um, Tim Holtz Distress Ink Vintage Photo and I am just smearing this onto um, my ceramic tile. Now I have done this process before. Shall I move it in a little bit so I get a bit more? Um, I don't want to take over the whole screen though. I have done this process before. Spritz it with a bit of water. Um, however, I can't remember which video I did. And then I give the tags just a bit of a spritz as well. And I literally just dunk them in there. And then I throw them to one side. Um, I do this just to get the ram randomness of it started. I don't care that it's fully covering everything. Because this is Manila file folder, they are very absorbent. They do dry quite quickly. And they also suction to the ceramic tile if I'm not careful. So periodically I go in and I'll put more on. The water really helps because obviously it activates the ink in the ink pad. 
and it helps it bead up, which means you get really interesting finishes on stuff. Um, I do this, actually I think the last time I did this, I might have done this on index cards, if I remember. That might have been the video that I did these in. I'll show you these as we go along, but I'll also show you them at the end, end of each stage of the make. So it's just a little bit on there. I need a little bit more of this. Now I'm using um, the Distress Inks. I would imagine you can do exactly the same process with any water soluble ink pad. So um, don't get hung up on the fact that it has to be Tim Holtz. I'm sure you could do this with um, other mediums. I've never done it with watercolor paints, but I can't imagine why it wouldn't work with watercolor paints as well. So I, I would just make the watercolor paints really liquid or really fluid on my ceramic mat and just go from there. Right, just a little bit more because I've only got two more to use and then I'm putting the lid back on my Distress Ink just so it doesn't actually move all over the place. I suppose you could use um, a refill bottle um, of ink as well and put it down and then spritz into that. So just getting the last of this off. As I said, it's a really, really easy process this and I very rarely make one tag at a time. I will very, very often do exactly what you're seeing here. I'll do 10 or 12 tags in one go. Okay, got that on, the, on there. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to take just a damp cloth and wipe that off. I'm trying lately to use damp cloths instead of wet wipes. So you'll see me using a damp cloth. Yeah, they go in the laundry with my coloured load and they come out fine at the other end. If they're a little stained, it doesn't bother me. So let's have a look at where we're at with these. So these, this is what we're getting so far. They will dry lighter um, and they do dry quite quickly. So as I said, I don't know how many we're making so far, but you can see we're starting to get that grungy look to them. Um, I find the most important thing is pretty much the colour combinations. Um, I try to sort of stay within a reasonable colour family, like if I'm doing earthy tones or if I'm doing um, warm tones or I'm working with maybe um, oranges and yellows. And Do you get my, my feeling? I'm, I tend to work with different types of colours, but I try to stay within what isn't jarring to the eye. So the next colour I'm using is peeled paint. Again, it's a distress oxide and I'm literally just repeating the process. So, but you said you wanted it, so you're gonna get it. Now, whereas before I was covering the whole tag, this time I'll just dip it in places. I might try and cover up little bits of um, white if I've got them on there. I don't want full coverage, I just want bits of it covered. As you can see, just, just little areas of it. I'm not wetting my tags again. I'm just literally sticking them down into the wet solution here. This time I'll be using so much less, less ink because I'm not covering the whole tag. Let's get a little bit on there. Um, obviously you can do as little or as much as you wish of this process. It's entirely up to you, as is everything you create. So I can't remember where I first saw this done. It may even have been Tim Holtz that I first saw do this sort of technique for spreading the ink, uh, moistening it, and um, then dipping the tags in. I know when I did um, the index cards that I've, I've mentioned in the video. I, I think I did, in fact, not think, I know I did it because I was inspired by um, a YouTube channel called Shinuki Art. Um, and if you do look through and see, see that on my playlist, there is a link in there for that video. I won't put the link in this video because it was a long time ago and I don't know that I'd be able to find it again, to be honest. Um, but never mind, there's plenty of stuff out there. So this is just the method that I use to create these. So I'm coming to the end of my pile of stuff. I'm not gonna put any more ink down because I'll just be throwing it away by cleaning it. So you usually find the last couple of tags in your pile are usually the palest ones, but I actually quite like that because it gives you some variety. I'm just gonna use this last one as a major mop up here. 
they go very subtle. So let's give that a bit of a wipe down, put the lid back on my ink. There you go. So now we've got this sort of look for all of them. Again, it will dry off um, paler than it is now. I like the fact that you just get this whole watery effect to it. So that's that one. The next one I like to use after the green is I use Iced Spruce, another Distress Oxide. I like this one because it comes out almost like a grey and I like that. It gives me quite an industrial look if I'm doing stuff where I, I want that feel or even some steampunky sort of influence. Again, I'm just picking up patches of it and just letting it be where it is. We will take a look at all of these in the end, by the way, so I'm not overly fussy. I, I have found that if I try and make them look good, they usually don't. So I find the quickest way to do it is literally to just be quick about it and just stick them in there. Now you could do this with journal cards. You could even do this with just papers that you were going to use in signatures in a journal. Um, anything, well basically you could do it on anything from belly bands to tags to flips to corners. I would say what I would probably do is I would just choose whether I'm using paper or card. And I would actually do this process and then just cut, cut them up into whatever you're going to make them into. Or fold them into journaling, um, into journal signatures. Whatever you feel you're going to use them for, make them after you've made the paper that way. If you've got any scraps left over from cutting, they make really interesting scraps for your scrap basket. So then you can do things like clusters and stuff like this. Right, getting to the end, so we're getting down to the paler ones. But that's fine with me, it gives me variety. So just wipe that bit off there. Now I usually do three to four colours, but no more than three to four colours or things tend to get really muddy looking. Let's come back in and clean off the ceramic tile. Now the ceramic tile, um, it's a large ceramic tile for bathrooms. Um, not that you really need to be hunting the same one I've got, but I went to my local builder supplies where you buy them, and this was in a discontinued or a clearance area, and they were just selling them off, and I think it cost me something like a dollar. It was or a pound. It was just it was just ridiculously cheap. So this is where we're at so far. With this, and you can see I've got this real earthy sort of feel. This would be great for a fall or an autumn journal or maybe a gardening journal, something along those lines. All of these nice luscious colours in there. Now the last thing I want to do is I'm putting one more colour in, and I really like this aged mahogany. Um, it gives it a certain warmth. So I said I wanted to stay within the same color range, but as you can see, it gives it a bit of a warmth, but it also gives almost like a rust effect. Now, this is the last time we're gonna be adding inks to this. After this, we're going to be adding other things. See, that gives it such an incredible look to it. Um, after this stage, we're gonna be doing other stuff. So I'll pull them back in once they're done. Let me just get this bit sorted. Um, they do dry quite quickly, but I would say that just make sure that they're fully dry before you try and do other things with them, because otherwise if you're trying to glue stuff to stuff that is this wet, it's never going to work for you. So, let's do a little bit more of that on there. I really love this, this aged mahogany is absolutely fabulous. I mean, I know some people use it for lots of other things, but this is pretty much what I use it for all the time. I just like that whole rusted look, that really interesting background texture it gives you that's visual. Let's just get this on there. So as I said, it is a bit of a repetitive process, so hopefully you're not bored. Or you can always fast forward, of course. I have no, no objection to that. I know when I watch other people's videos, if it's a repeated process, I will very often fast forward through it because once I've seen something done once, I've pretty much got that. 
So, all right, and the last one, I'm just gonna come in and give it a bit of a clean up on my tile. So let's put the lid back on the water, lid back on the distress, give this a bit of a wipe down. And now we're gonna move on to the next stage in a second, but before we do that, I'm gonna bring in the colored, colored pieces that I have, the colored inks. Actually, why don't I do, I just had an idea. If I put them on there, and I lift this up to you, Maybe if you want to do a screenshot of that, then you can actually see what the colours were or you've got time to write it down. This one is vintage photo that I can see by the lid. I've used it a lot, so therefore, so there you go, that gives you that. So let's move that to one side and bring these just back in so we can have a quick look at them. And then I'm going to pause the video while I set up for the next bit. And at the same time, these will be drying. So this is where we're at with these. And as you can see, you get this really beautiful, almost autumn camouflage color. And I absolutely love this. They will lighten as they dry, as I've said already. And there's one more there. Now, so they're all nice and dry now. I just put a hair dryer on them. So on to the next stage for me now. I'm going to put down, probably do these in two batches. I'm not sure how many I've got here. I just pulled them out. So I've got a bit of a, an, a clean mat, as I like to call it here. So the one working on it, I'm not going to be doing anything onto my... Um, cutting board or work mat underneath. So I'm just gonna line up, can I get four on there? Maybe I'll get four on there. Yeah, I can get four and it'll still be in shot. Cool. And put some down here. So a lot of the time I will stop at this stage and just leave these in my ephemera box and then I can do the next stage or not do the next stage. It depends on what I'm what I'm planning to use the tags for. So my next step now is I'm going to use black archival. You could use any color archival you want. I would recommend a water resistant ink, which this is. Um, and then I'm going to use um, these stamps were both on one piece, um, but because I store mine in envelopes, I cut it in half. But it's the Ledger Script CMS241 by Tim Holtz, Stamps Anonymous. I tend to use this one, the bigger one, because I'm doing bigger areas. So let's just pull that one out. And I'm leaving it on its plastic backing because I don't need it to be precious. Um, I'm going to come in and I tend to press... Can you see that? Maybe you can't. Let's put it over there. Um, I press the stamp pad into the stamp, not the other way around. And then I'll come in and I will stamp across different sections. Now, I don't mind if the script is the right way up, the wrong way up, whichever, which is why I tend to do like this mass stamping thing because it doesn't matter to me it's just the background stuff now if i know that i'm going to be working say in the bottom half and i've got these upside down i can just flip it so it is upside down and i stamp away on that but i'm just trying to put some interest into the background here it's subtle i mean but that that doesn't show that much but it shows enough i'll take a quick look at them this one could do a small soak of that one so that was okay. So these two could do with a little bit more on them. That one can do with a little bit more. I think I don't want to over labor the stamping of the text because if I put too much on, then sometimes that's all you see. So let's just do another little bit on here. Just across these two and I think I'll do it this way on. And then these two can have it the correct way up, just that way on. And I'm not worried if it's straight. I'm not worried if it's aligned, anything like that. So let's just do these last four. Now you can, of course, line them up so that they're actually in this format. 
Um, the reason I tend to not do that is if I'm stamping and I haven't got this clean mat down, then of course this bit here gets stamped as well. So if it's my work table and I'm stamping archival onto it, I then have a permanent bit of stamping through to the base, which isn't exactly what everyone really wants. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do right in the middle, so that's given me four of them. A little bit more. Pick it up and I think I'll just do a little bit there. A little bit there and see if I can get any ghost of a stamp off on there. Okay, right, so basically I've now got these stamped up so I've got a little bit of interest in the background. So let's put put the ink pad back away and I'll put this away afterwards. Now my next bit, my next bit of the process, I really do want to cover up all of my mat because I'm about to get a little bit messy, should we say. Let's put, let's put some paper under this side so I don't get it everywhere because this again is a process that I like to do en masse. I will try and do all of the tags at the same time because why not? So some of these may be in shot, some of them may not be in shot. Um, but it's the same thing I'm doing for all of them, all in one go. Let's bring that across there. We've got two more. Let's just stick the last two on the end there. Right. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I've got... I've got another ceramic tile here. Just a, I tend to use ceramic tiles a lot. They, they tend to work for me. I, I use them instead of a plastic palette purely because then I don't have to be washing up the plastic palette all the time. Um, and I think it's just a little better for the environment if I'm just only using the one thing. So I've just got an old brush and I've got, I've got some acrylic. I'm using the one in the bottle because basically it's... It's softer, it, it flows better, but I'm going to be adding water to this anyway, so whichever black you wanted to use is fine. I'm using acrylic, you could use black ink. I tend to like using acrylic paint for this. Um, I find that the end result is more defined. Just give it a bit more of a spritz. I want it fluid, but I don't want it runny, if that makes sense. So hopefully you can see roughly what I'm talking about here. A little bit of fluidity. I think that will be enough. Just just so I can, it sort of holds its shape on the plate. So I just put that into there so I don't drop that anywhere else. And then what I've got is I've got this is a stipple brush. It's a brush for stippling into stencils and stuff like that. Um, inexpensive. You could use any brush you like for this, but this is the one I like to use. I've even seen people use a toothbrush brush for this. So you pick your paint up, which I'm going to put this to one side now, and then I'm going to come in and I'm literally pulling the bristles back and letting them flick. And I like the, the stipple brush because it gives me little tiny flecks of black. I don't get huge amounts of um, big daubs, whereas I do sometimes with some of those um, brushes that are meant for um, putting spots on stuff. I just, I like this because it's more subtle. Granted, you end up with a really messy hand, but you know what? I'm an artist, I'm a crafter, I'm used to having messy hands. Right, so let me put this to one side as well. Get my damp cloth on. So that's just given me enough of interest on it. Now, this was the point at which I stopped when I did those background um, tags for that video. And then once it was completely dry, I then took some Tim Holtz tissue paper and actually tore the tissue paper into pieces and stuck it down on them. I think if I bring some of these in. OK, as you can see, I stuck the bits of Tim Holtz tissue paper down the sides. Um, there's a little bit behind them there. Um, I don't want to do that with these ones. See, there's a bit more there. Purely because I've got other plans for the ones we've just made. So as you can see, I just stuck the tissue paper down. So that was my next stage. The next stage for this, however, because I want this to be slightly different yet again, is I'm going to pull in 
um, some distress spray stain and it's white I think is it linen well this is picket fence now this could be done with white acrylic paint in the same way that I've just done um, the black so I'll just give that a good shake and then I don't spray it I tend to lift off the tube and give it a tap and as you can see I get these splatters over my backgrounds if you get large pieces you're not happy with just go in and just dab them off no one will judge you for them they will just lift off completely as you can see they're almost invisible if I want to dab them away so my aim is normally to do small splatters not big ones so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a few seconds just to dry all of this so you actually get to see what the end result is. So here they are completely dry. Now you'll notice immediately they have become a little paler and also all of the white splatters I put on there just disappear into the background. You don't see them as white splatters but they do leave slightly fainter marks on there. So let's take a look at these and I'll talk about a few things as we go along. Okay, um, I do very often once I use these I will use um, distress ink and distressy edges because I feel it just it frames it out completely I haven't done the backs of them I haven't glued a back on them so they are quite thin I will now put these into my ephemera box as backgrounds ready to be decorated up and at that point I will decide what I'm backing them with I might sew around them I might not sew around them I might glue them I might use them for other things I could even come in and chop that bit off and turn it into a journaling tag if I really needed to but just to have things like this in your stash just means that you could just with a couple of things stuck onto it a label a ticket maybe a Tim Holtz person as we did in the original video or even maybe um, a flower or something just or a moth it just depends on what you put in there it just gives you an interesting background now I know someone is going to say will I be making a digital of these I will not and the reason is because it's got Tim Holtz on there um, and Tim Holtz stamps are obviously copyrighted so I can't I can't do that there is a chance that maybe in the future I might do some of these and not use a Tim Holtz stamp I do have access to other stamps I could put in here without breaching copyright so hopefully like that um, for the people who actually asked how I did it that was how I did it I would say experiment with the different color combinations because they do give you a very very different look and that's really exciting to me so good way to put something into your stash um, this was the size of the journal tag I cut in the first place um, just my preference I tend to have these I like a larger tag I put them in pockets I put them just as bookmarks sometimes if you've got them this size you can also fold them up and make them into a pocketed one I love these so that's that's the size I was using and that just leaves me to say I'm Kerry the Crafter that's C-E-R-I the Crafter so until next time bye bye now